Good evening. I'm Patrick Murphy Racy. My background is in photojournalism. I have a degree in uh, photojournalism from a uh, university here in the U.S. Um, I basically spent a bit of time in newspapers and then transitioned into magazines where I became primarily an editorial freelance photographer. And then I moved into more uh, corporate work, uh, industrial photography, and um, in doing annual reports for businesses, big, 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 you know, publicly held companies. Um, I also have delved into a higher education photography, which is one of my favorite things to do because they let me do everything. I get to shoot sports, portraits, video. Why should you listen to me about anything? Um, first, I would say that uh, I've been doing uh, photography full-time for my entire career of 35 years. In that time, I've shot Canon um, FD, then I went to Nikon Manual Focus, then I went to Canon EOS, I think in 1992, and then um, all the way until I was 19 years a Canon shooter, and then I went back to Nikon autofocus gear um, in 2011, um, and then um, ended up working with that gear until I started shooting the A6000, which initially I started shooting everything from like um, the wide to 7200 range with that and then I was still shooting Nikon. Then I was adapting lenses to uh, work with Sony and then eventually ended up with um, the Sony full frame, which was amazing. And um, that then had to exercise a lot of patience while they learned how to make glass, which they do very well. <laughs> um, it wasn't until they made a 428 that I became fully um, Sony all the way. So I'm very happy to be no longer using adapted lenses. I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy with, um, well, obviously the Alpha 1, but uh, the lenses that go on the Alpha 1 are, are tremendous assets to what I, everything I do. I've broken down my sort of assessment of the Alpha 1 into different areas that I think go together. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the image quality at 50, 50 megapixel. Um, I'm going to address that first, and then and then we'll address each other section as they come. So number one is the 50 megapixel sensor. It's important to understand that this sensor is not from another camera. It's not borrowed from video. It's not from the Venice. This sensor is brand new and designed only and exclusively for the Alpha One body. Um, this is important because they designed this sensor basically to do everything. Um, but it's a big sensor. 50 megapixel is a huge sensor. And before I had the opportunity to shoot the Alpha 1 for the very first time, I told everybody that would listen to me that going larger than 36 megapixel is silly for a sports camera. It just doesn't, we don't need it. Um, then I shot the Alpha 1 and realized how much the punch-in changed where I could zoom on the sensor in the camera. And it's like having a built-in teleconverter that doesn't cost you a stop of light. Once I realized um, how good the images were when you were zoomed in on the sensor and getting 21 megapixels out of what was zoomed in, I became a quick convert to 50 megapixels, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I'm all over it. And the ability to crop, uh, you can do severe crops to these images and they still work great. Unfortunately, Sony could only send me one Alpha 1 to chest with, and uh, so I didn't have a down court camera. So I was using a 24 to 105 on the close end of the court. And of course, when the action goes down, down the other end, I didn't have a 300 and another body to stick it on. So I just stayed with a 105. Now, if you punch in 1.5x with the 105, you get a 157.5 millimeter lens. And this is what it looks like all the way down at the other end. And this is what it looks like cropped. Unbelievable. If you could ever told me that I would have been able to shoot down court with a 150 millimeter lens and actually make a picture that was meaningful and able to be sent to somebody, I'd be shocked. Then on top of that, you have the fact that this is a great camera in low light. So it's a big file, a huge file, and it's an excellent camera in low light. And Sony's saying 15 plus uh, stops at dynamic range, which is incredible. Uh, and I found that to be true. Uh, shooting tennis indoors under really bad, poor lighting, uh, I was able to get very, very good results. 
I would say that the Alpha One rivals the low light performance of even the A7S II and even the A7S III. It's certainly on par with A9 II um, with the added advantage of the bigger file and even better skin tone renderings in low light. A lot of cameras will give you high ISOs and even low noise, but they won't make faces look right or skin tone. And because of the cinema influence that Sony has, I think that the Venice is coming through in the Alpha One quite well. Um, I'm going to add some comments here that are going to sound like I'm going to be getting into someone else's territory uh, this, in this evening's presentation, but I want to talk about S-Cinetone. So the Alpha One is the very um, first action-oriented camera, like the A9 or A9 II, that has logs. And so logs is typically a video setting. Most still photographers don't know about logs or why you'd even want to fool with them. But the logs in the camera allow you to get something called s cinetone uh, And this is literally from the Venice uh, movie camera. I use the s cinetone log um, in my still photography all the time. Uh, and that might surprise some of you, but the, the ability for the camera to render skin tones accurately, give you lots of mid-range in mid-tones, and have recoverable highlights. These are all very important things if you're shooting sports at noon in a bright, bright, sunny summer day. Um, so the ability for the Alpha One sensor to wrap itself around with massive dynamic range and then adding into that as Cinetone is a huge advantage that I have. Uh, the other thing that's really nice is I can gang um, tone. I can tone like everything in a take at once in Capture One or Lightroom or whatever. And um, this is a great advantage for me. And so I can take a really harsh, nasty, contrasty light and I can shoot everything as normal, but adding a Cinetone um, over my uh, images while I'm shooting them. And I can get really, really great results with that. Um, so I really appreciate the fact that logs are in the super camera in addition to the big file and, and all the rest. So that, that's really great. Now, this is not a great couple of pictures, but first base play, it's easy to get the ball in front of the mitt. If you're paying attention and you're like on the action, you're going to get this. What is unusual is to get this next frame where the ball is inside the mitt, but the mitt is not closed yet. And this is the great gift of 30 frames per second. In baseball, it's going to be a wonder. The big news about the Alpha One when it first came out was 30 frames per second, and it is great. It's awesome to be able to shoot 30 frames a second, especially blackout free. But I think there are other things that are more important about the camera. Um, now, as an example, you know, like it's one and a half times the frame rate of the A92 and the A9, which, you know, 20 frames a second was amazing anyway, especially blackout free. But the it's kind of funny that the high plus setting on the Alpha One is 30 frames, and now just the old normal high is 20 frames a second, the same as the A92 and the A9. Um, and honestly, I shot 30 frames a second on everything I did when I got to test the camera, but 30 frames a second is too fast for many sports. Now, certain sports it's going to be awesome for. Anything that requires uh, people running at full tilt, like in track and field, I think it's going to be a tremendous asset. In American football, certainly, uh, running backs are very quick, agile, and fast. And to be able to shoot them, every time they push off with their foot, I'm actually getting two frames of them in the air, not touching the ground, which is huge. I got that with A9 II. I think it's going to be possible to get three frames of them in the air which is just a huge benefit. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. So even though 30 frames a second is a little too fast for a lot of sports, um, there are moments when 30 frames is awesome and it's perfect. Um, the next section I want to talk about is the huge advantages in increased performance, accuracy, and speed of the autofocus of the Alpha 1 over the A9 II and the A9. Now, 
before I get into that, I want to state that the A9 and the A92 are fantastic cameras and they autofocus unbelievably well. They're so, so good at what they do. However, A1 brings a whole new level of performance and accuracy to still photography uh, and video as well. A9 and A92 have what are called 60 time per second autofocus and auto exposure uh, adjustments. This means that when you're shooting 20 frames per second on the A92, for instance, the camera has enough time at that speed, at, at 20 frames per second, to make three different separate adjustments of autofocus and exposure for each frame before it commits to a focus setting. Alpha One is able to achieve 120 adjustments to each individual file at 30 frames per second. So the, the camera is not only uh, 30 faster by 10 frames per second than the A92, but it's also faster and more accurate at autofocus once it's shooting at 30 frames per second. It's a phenomenal performance. Uh, it's really an unparalleled experience when you're editing the pictures especially because there's just nothing out of focus virtually. There are 693 autofocus points in the A92. There are 759 in the Alpha 1. So they've made it, it's basically full frame. I mean, the entire 2-3 proportion is covered left, right, up, and down with autofocus points. And this is a combination of, of uh, contrast and phase detection points together, combining. So it gives you this sort of unstoppable ability to achieve autofocus in things that are just so fast it's it's hard to it's hard to describe honestly even when you go into APS-C mode you still retain all 759 autofocus points I'm not exactly sure how Sony managed that but it's pretty slick perhaps the lead that was lost in the announcement of the Alpha 1 was the flicker free aspect in shooting 30 frames per second on on silent shutter in prior cameras, all of them, in order to get uh, flicker-free performance out of it, you had to stop shooting electronic shutter, leave silent shutter, go into mechanical shutter, which then put you at 10 frames per second. And then if you read the directions in the manual really carefully, you'll find out that the what was happening is the, the mechanical shutter was advancing or retarding a little bit before it shot frames so that you weren't able even to get the full 10 frames per second. It was slowing it down because some frames need to be faster, some slower, depending on what the light was doing in terms of the pulsing from the artificial lights. The Alpha 1 has been completely set free from mechanical shutter for the purpose of anti-flicker. And so now, instead of being relegated to 10 frames per second and using anti-flicker, we can now shoot at 30 frames per second with a silent shutter and blackout free and experience no, no results of anti-flicker. So it, it is an unbelievable experience shooting in poor light, in very, very poorly lit indoor situations or under lights at night. And to be able to shoot 30 frames a second all of a sudden was just awesome for me. I mean, it was really... And in the tennis photography that I did, you'll see this flicker sign shows up. What you're able to do in the menus is turn anti-flicker on and just leave it on. And anytime the camera enters into a situation where it senses that the lights are pulsing, it will automatically then engage anti-flicker. So you don't even have to fool with it. It's a very, very cool system. And it just makes it easier on everybody. Now, like probably many of you, I have been using A9 and A92 for a long time, but I love the files I get from the A7R4. The only problem is the A7R4 does not focus as well as the A9 or the A92, and it certainly is not in the same league with the A1. So, uh, but I get frustrated sometimes because I'll get a really great frame that might be a little soft with A7R4. And the great thing about the about Alpha 1 is that now we have one camera that does everything really, really well. In fact, maybe the best. And so here's an image that was shot where the strobes didn't fire um, and the, still the camera was able to focus on a completely backlit model. Um, there's like three windows open and a lamp in the background. There's no <laughs> light in front of her whatsoever. So she's looking at me in total darkness. And even though that's the case, the camera never missed a beat and focused no matter what. Here's the results of that image. 
And here's another image that was a closer shot with a 135 1.8 G Master lens, one of my favorites. And as you zoom in even further, you realize that, you know, if you get the Alpha 1, you may need to be doing a lot more post uh, retouching than ever before because not only do you have pimples to get rid of, you have like blood vessels in the eyes and you have split ends in the hair and dandruff and everything else. So be careful what you ask for <laughs> because Alpha 1 delivers whether you need to do that post or not. Alpha 1 employs a 9.44 million dot EVF now. So the quality is the same as the A7S III, except for a huge difference, and that is it's going twice as fast. So the frame rate that the EVF, that is what to say, when you're looking through the camera, the, you can actually go all the way up to 240 frames per second now. So there are now three choices of speed of the EVF. If you want the highest quality possible, you can just choose 60 frames per second and you're going to get that full 9.44 mil dot uh, experience, which is nearly, um, some people are saying, and I kind of agree with them, that I prefer the EVF in the Alpha 1 over an optical viewfinder. I really do. I, I like it much better. Um, but if you want to go a little faster than that, you can match the speed of the A9 and the A9 II by choosing 120 frames per second. But if you want to go all the way up, if you're shooting maybe F1 really tight or you're doing pans, Moto GP or something like that, something that's extremely fast. If you're really close shooting on the outside of a turn in speed skating, for instance, some of the Olympic sports, um, it will re really be beneficial to have 240 frames a second. Be aware, though, that when you choose 240 frames a second, two things are going to happen. Uh, one, your quality is going to automatically drop in the viewfinder. And then two, your battery life is going to be impacted by this. Not terribly so, but you're going to notice a difference. You're going to, it's going to kind of drain down. So my advice to you is if you shoot a lot of sports, I would leave it at the 120 frame per second setting unless you really, really need 240. If you need 240, it's there and you can use it. Um, but I like the quality and the I think the speed is pretty good. It's, it's good enough for most sports to be at the medium setting, but it's so cool that I can turn all the way up if I want to or need to. If you haven't figured it out, I wear glasses, and many of us do, and it's very frustrating. I've never had the ability to look into um, a camera that Sony has made where I can see the entire inside of the viewfinder easily. There's now what's called eye relief, or what Nikon used to call high eye point uh, viewfinder. Basically what they've done is they've made it where you can push the EVF back a little bit. So you have two choices now of either 41 degrees field of view or 33, field of, 33 degrees field of view. And this is phenomenal because it allows those of us that wear glass to see everything in the viewfinder for the first time. This is a huge benefit to those of us that shoot sports. Um, sometimes I will use the diopter and take my glasses off and leave that big magnification in there. But there are other times in other sports where I'll, I'll wear my glasses and then push back a little bit where I can see the entire inside of the viewfinder. So either way, it's just great to have the option. It's, it's a wonderful asset now for those of us that, that wear glasses. One of the fixes that's happened on the Alpha One that Sony's not really talked about is they've moved the eye sensor in the viewfinder and the EVF to the bottom center. Now, in its new position, it's easy to keep clean and num most importantly, you can't bump the eyepiece so that it blocks the sensor and shuts the camera down where you can't use it all of a sudden. So this is a great benefit. Uh, I'm really, really happy they did this. And it's another example of Sony's attention to detail and how they listen to photographers that are actually out in the, in the trenches doing this every day. And the feedback that we're giving them is actually making new product. It's, it's so cool. The next thing I want to talk about is the processing power of Alpha One. Now this sounds crazy, but there's eight times more processing power in an Alpha One than an A92. Now the reason why this is so amazing is the A92 is so fast and so powerful on its own. But with eight times the speed of processing, this allows the camera to chunk through 50, 50 megapixel files at the rate of 30 frames per second, even shooting raw. So it, it's really an amazing feat of engineering that they were able to achieve this. So now with the new Alpha One processor, it requires the, the sort of throughput of the camera 
or the fire hose, if you will, to be much larger to allow tons more information to travel inside the camera from the sensor. And then finally into the card, which is also changed. Believe me when I tell you, I know a lot of people have been emailing me and, and finding my YouTube channel asking me, hey, can I use my Sony G cards with this camera? And then the answer is, yeah, you can, but why would you want to? Why would you want to go that slow? So remember, G cards have 295 slash 300 megabits per second up and down. The new uh, CF Express Type A cards that Sony has are 700 and 800 megabits per second. So they're so much faster than you're used to. They're, they're more than double the speed. Uh, so um, basically, you're not going to want to use SD cards for the Alpha 1. You're really going to want to go ahead and just commit to the CF Type A cards because it's the only way to realize the speed and power of Alpha 1. Alpha One has a brand new mechanical shutter. Now, the shutter itself is a combination of old technology and brand new technology that Sony has invented, which is really cool. These motors are taking a mechanical piece of carbon fiber and they're moving them extremely fast, slowing them down. And that this combination of these two shutter, this first curtain, the second shutter, opening at, at a much faster rate than has ever been before possible is allowing the camera to shoot uh, strobes at one four hundredth of a second. And that is phenomenal, phenomenal. This, this has opened up new vistas for those of us that use strobes to shoot in arena sports like the NBA and the NHL. So hockey and basketball here. Um, it is a massive change and it's a welcome change because it means that um, if we have a small set of strobes, maybe Ellen Chrome, which are made in Europe, that's what I use, uh, you can go into a, a big arena that's very bright with a set of small Ellen Chrome monoblock strobes, and you can illuminate that entire arena, and because of the high sync speed of 400th of a second, it means that I'm able to do away with all the ambient light in there and then freeze the action um, much better than I would without that high sync speed. Prior to this, I did figure out how to hypersync the A92 to 320th of a second, um, but it's not a clean 320. You could go to 250 with perfectly clean, but this ability to use, just shove a pocket wizard on the top of the camera and absolutely get to shoot uh, 400 of a second clean is amazing. Uh, and remember, you can if you're in APS-C mode, you can actually shoot at 500 of a second, which matches the Compour shutter of the leaf shutter cameras like Hasselblad. So it's a huge change uh, for those of us that still use a lot of strobes, especially in arenas for sports photography. It's a great benefit to us. I'm so thankful to have this 400 strobe sync. One last note that a lot of people again missed in the announcement of the camera is that when you're in electronic shutter, you can now use a strobe. You can sync a strobe in full frame up to 200th of a second and you can go if you go to APS-C and you go in that punch-in mode, you can go to 250th of a second. Now this is really cool, and you might think, why would I want to do that? Um, those of us that shoot a lot of portraits with lights, you can actually see the pop of the light when you're looking through a blackout-free viewfinder. And this is a huge advantage. You can see if somebody blinked, you can see if somebody's got a lazy eye and there's a lot of half blinks. Um, you can also see when you get a really great expression, you think you may have nailed it. Um, so this combination with IAF and tracking autofocus is a, is a huge asset for us. Every once in a while when you're shooting an arena on strobes, they don't fire. Now, typically when this happens, the image is so underexposed that you just delete it. But when I was shooting the A1 in this exact situation, I actually saw this picture and I, I kind of zoomed in on it in the camera and I went, wow, that might be savable which is crazy because it's about four stops underexposed, but I kept it and I was able to make this out of that image. And it's just another testament of how good the sensor is. People for years have been buying cameras based on specifications and features. And really from now on, it's all about the sensor. You gotta look at the sensor and what it's able to do. And this is like nothing short of a miracle to be able to get this image out of a four stop underexposed picture is pretty crazy. So in my estimation, the Alpha One gives us the best ever autofocus performance speed 
an accuracy that, that I've ever seen in any camera, period. I think Sony is so far ahead on this point that it's just not even funny anymore. Uh, the competition has so far to go to even reach into the same realm as Alpha One. Um, most of them are trying to figure out how to make a camera like an A9 II still, and now we already have the Alpha One, so it's a really cool thing. Um, the massive files from the Alpha One are a joy to edit with. It's really fun to do post-processing on these files because there's so much headroom and dynamic range. Um, they're so beautiful, even when you crop in, you still have tons of meat left on the bone, shall we say. It is a fantastic experience. Um, but when you're shooting pictures with Alpha One and you have the CF Type A cards, it gives you a unhindered, non-weight experience that I've wanted for a long, long time. Um, before Alpha One, the DSLRs were still better at being able to shoot a burst of frames and immediately look at them and preview them uh, in the camera. Now, with, the, con with the, the speed of the processing and the speed of the cards, it can accept those images so fast. We now have that combination giving us the ability to shoot a burst and immediately look at what we just shot, which is really powerful. And it makes the camera a greater tool for deadline photography, especially in the sports world. There's now a new option with the delete button. Now, typically in the past, you know, you had two different options in the delete. Now there's three. And one of them was what I call the double tap. And so now you can literally hit the trash button twice fast and the picture's gone. So if you sh what, we, what we typically do with Alpha One, when you have 30 frames a second, it's really hard not to shoot beyond the peak moment of action. So you'll end up with six, eight frames. And when you're first starting out, honestly, you'll shoot 15 extra past the point of the, the, the picture. And so it's really nice to be able to, in between plays on the field, you can just double tap, double tap, double tap until you get back to the image and then you can stop. So it's helping me to call images on the field while I'm shooting sports live rather than doing it in a laptop afterwards in a press room or something like that. It's just giving me that much more um, performance on the post side of things um, and helping me not waste a lot of time. I was very fortunate in that I got an Alpha One in my hands uh, for about eight days. And I shot a lot of different sports in that eight days. Every day I had something else planned. Some days I had two things. Um, the big letdown was the day I had to send it back uh, because I couldn't keep the camera. Um, a few days later, after spending a little over a week shooting the Alpha One, I shot an American football game. And I had to go back to using my A9 II. Now, I love the A9 II, but it was a slug. It was so slow, I couldn't believe it. And so for those of you that are kind of thinking, yeah, I can justify one of these cameras, but I can't do two, I think you're going to quickly find a way to get that second body or even the third body. Because when you have this incredibly fast camera that does everything fast and quickly, it's really hard to go back and use something slower once you're accustomed to the Alpha One it just kind of ruins you, and in just a few minutes it ruins you. Once you get acclimated to the, to the speed and power of the Alpha One, you're just gonna wanna only shoot that. Um, so that's that was my experience. I, I have, I, well, I will have two of them when my second one eventually comes, but for right now, I'll, I could only get one. But I'm excited for getting that second body. In closing, I have just a few thoughts about the Alpha One. Um, since Sony's very beginning, they have chosen to make full-frame cameras in R for resolution, S for sensitivity, and the A9 cameras were all for action. So you have action, sensitivity, and resolution. The Alpha One is clearly a combination of all three of those. Uh, it is kind of the perfect melding, if you will, of the three different specialty cameras that Sony has made to date. Uh, Alpha One just doesn't really have a peer, in my opinion. Um, there's not really anything to compare it to. Um, you'd have to go, the closest thing to the Alpha One is the A9 II and the A7R4 and the A7S III <laughs> and the Venice and the FX9. And you see where I'm going with this. Um, 
it's just a phenomenal camera. It truly is a super camera. Um, there are cars that have been made, um, especially in Europe, Ferrari and Porsche and, you know, Lamborghini and, uh, you know, different companies that have made supercars. Um, and this camera, Alpha One, is truly a super camera. It's just like that, um, except that it's dependable and predictable and pretty much maintenance-free because most of the time, let's face it, it's going to be using electronic shutter. There's no moving parts. So it's, it's really, in many ways, a perfect product. Um, and it's a breathtaking camera. It's a camera that I did not expect. I wasn't expecting an Alpha 1. I was expecting an A9 III with 250 sync, not a 50 megapixel monster camera that would shoot even faster than an A9 II.